Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As ever, I am your host, Michael Pacheco. And joining me today is Craig Martin. Craig is a serial entrepreneur, a business coach and consultant, and recovering advertising executive, helping entrepreneurs build seven-figure businesses to exit and exit to freedom for the past two decades. Now on a mission to help one million entrepreneurs make an impact, Craig Martin, welcome to The Remarkable Coach. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Um, on a mission to help one million entrepreneurs to make an impact. That's a huge number. I love it. I love that you're that, taking that moonshot. Um, so as with always with, with this podcast, kind of the way that I like to open it up is just inviting our guests to tell us a little bit more about yourself in your own words and why you do what you do. Uh, so my journey started uh, in the early 2000s in the advertising industry. I worked with an agency uh, for about a year and a half, uh, mm -hmm. and then I transitioned out, started a design studio, then that transitioned into a boutique advertising agency. And that was the beginning of the journey till now. Um, well, I no longer operate on the agency side. I'm now in, coach, in the coaching space, consulting mm -hmm. space. But that journey, the, the coaching journey began after making some changes in the advertising business. Um, mainly, I, at one point, did project based on conversations and not by um, creative briefs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You, you know, I eradicate those out of my process. Mm -hmm. And the result that came from that, eventually clients start reaching out for to me for consultation, mm -hmm. um, coaching. And then that was the beginning journey for where I'm at right now. I love it, man. I love it. Um, why? So clients started reaching out to you. Did you did you feel you know did you feel drawn to the coaching space more than so you used to be an ad agency owner, with and, yeah. and that and now you've moved into the coaching space. Is that because were you just following kind of product market fit, following the demand, or did you have kind of an internal pull into coaching or something like that? There was an internal pull, but I think the my clients at the time kind of helped fuel that journey. Mm -hmm. And sure. um, looking back then, you you were doing a lot of consultation along the journey, it's just that we have you have officially titled it during the process. Sure. Yeah. What what kinds of consultations were you? were you doing while you were still owning the agency and how did that change as you transitioned from agency life into the coaching space? Uh, well, uh, clients oftentimes will present creative briefs to you and then there's a lot of time when they're looking for you to basically translate back what they presented to you to them mm -hmm. sure and multiple times they will reach out okay we have this we're thinking about doing this project we're at this stage of it um how do you advise we go for forward so it's little by little there there are little points in between that you would be doing some form of consultation some form of coaching but as i said there wasn't a title to yeah. it at that point yeah what did what did the transition look like the process of formalizing the title right for coaching you 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 were doing it before and then and then you formalized it and made it an, an official thing what did that process what did that transition look like uh well it wasn't difficult because at that point i had a number of clients that i was basically operating in that space with hmm. because when i stopped working from creative brief creative briefs mm -hmm. clients now start seeing gaps within mm -hmm. their business because now 
I was doing stuff based on conversations. You have a problem, we sit down, we figure out what the problem is, and we figure out a uh, solution. Mm -hmm. And then now those conversations start leading into deeper things mm -hmm. because more more questions now are being asked. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer looking at a piece of paper or looking for a, at a document that was emailed to me. Mm -hmm. We're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Their physical interaction, their people's emotions, like everything comes into play. So now they realize that this problem was actually a perception. Mm -hmm. So it went on to the, the coaching, consulting thing becomes a part of the process of the work that we were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so eventually just went. And I found that I was creating and providing more value mm -hmm. in, in that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it wasn't just about producing some creative work mm -hmm. you know it, it was no longer about the, the the tv the radio the print it, it, it wasn't about those things anymore mm -hmm. it was now about building this company you, you're you're in the helping in the process of making this thing becomes something greater than it is mm -hmm. i love it <clears throat> I love it. So who, who are your clients today? Who, who do you work with today? I work on a psychographic uh, basis. I don't, you know, a lot of coaches will, you know, so I, I work with entrepreneurs at this stage. I work with, I tend to choose clients based on um, uh, psychographic, you know, mm -hmm. where they are, what they are looking to achieve you know what problem is in front of you and what's your future state mm -hmm. you know how what, what your drive is like those are the things now that determine okay do i want to work with this person mm -hmm. so you don't do you have i guess more specifically do you have you know like a specific industry that you work within or a size of company uh, no, not specifically, no. Um, over the years, as I said, you've been in the advertising business for 20 odd years. I worked across a wide spectrum. You know, sure. I dealt with companies from early stage up to Fortune 500 companies. I've worked with them all. A lot of the major brands now across the country, I did work with a number of them. Yeah, oh, nice. Awesome. How do you How do you get your clients today? How do you market yourself and your services? networking now most, mostly and um there are times when clients will reach out uh, i am basically now trying to present myself in a wider scale make my, my presence more in in the world currently you know, mm -hmm. i haven't been one of the person that was actively on social media over the years. So now I'm basically just getting myself in a space, uh, trying to create more content to feed out there. And also as a part of that goal of trying to create some form of impact to that 1 million inch up in Europe. Mm -hmm. Nice. What does a typical engagement look like with you, Craig? <clears throat> So my basic is for uh, three months. That that's my basic minimum package that uh, that will or should give an entrepreneur enough time for a transformation. Because I I coach around insights. Yeah, so it's a transformational process with whoever I'm working with and. Three months is a fair enough time for somebody to have some great transformation in their process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What uh, <clears throat> what does it look like within that three months? Are you are you meeting with the person once a week, once a month? Is there is there group coaching involved, or is it all purely one on one? So one on one, and 
for that engagement for so three months there's three times per month okay yeah yeah you, you have three sessions per month and then in between i'm always available for follow-ups stuff like that in between mm -hmm. and separate from that there is a group coaching program mm -hmm. so that's separate from that and um that's acclimated minds yeah very good very good um tell me about you so you mentioned the transformational process what is that what does that mean are we talking when you, when you say transformational are we talking about specifically are we looking at revenue specifically are we building brands are we doing scaling and growth where 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 does that transformation take place there's a lot of different like there's a lot of different aspects in business right so where specifically does that transformation take place the great part my background gives me the advantage to spread myself across the board mm -hmm. <laughs> from you know the, the branding the business development all of that so mm -hmm. wherever the problem lies at the moment whatever gap is there within that person's that entrepreneur's journey then we'll identify it validate that it's actually a problem that needs to be addressed mm -hmm. and put an action plan in place and we get things going from there nice do you use any um do you use any do you have any like frameworks that you that you follow or do you are you truly treating you know every client as a as a unique instance i have a framework that i developed you know over the years um i did pieces of work using multiple frameworks mm -hmm. and then the things that I found myself using most, I created a framework around that for myself. And that's RISE. That's, you know, a revolutionary insight for our success and empowerment. Love it. So, uh, you know, so that's a framework that I developed for myself. <clears throat> revolutionary? Insights. Insights. For for success and empowerment. For success and empowerment, nice. Yeah. So, so tech... that base, that em embodies what I do, and mm -hmm. um, I I was using it for years. There was no name attached to it. I was just you know kind of oh, I have multiple frameworks that I work with. But then, um, the same question keeps coming up: uh, What frameworks do you use? <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to figure out a name to, okay so at first i had um the business evolution mm -hmm. but then i saw oh, it's kind of a little bit long mm -hmm. and i had it in my mind just playing around and then you know the, the the words are common words that i use in my process every day mm -hmm. and eventually they just form themselves together and i just okay well this is a great acronym <laughs> Nice. I love it. That's great, man. Um, what sorts of things, what sorts of things did you struggle with when you first made that transition out of agency life and into the coaching space? Ah, <laughs> it's a fun question, right? <laughs> yeah. There, the, the thing about it, um, mm -hmm. there's always been some struggles along the journey and mm -hmm. again th that's one of the thing that makes this journey a little bit exciting mm -hmm. you know um their clients that i i i was working with at the time that was like oh well but who's gonna do this and who's gonna do that so then i had to reach out and then i had other people that i would break in to those clients Mm -hmm. to handle creative stuff and then it came to the point also that the 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 internet creative platforms 
start taking precedence and then you know a lot of con clients will start okay we, we move the small stuff over here and then we leave the big stuff to the agency and then it got to the stage where yeah i guess everybody becomes a designer <laughs> mm -hmm. so that was kind of a little thing in between that I had to not just me but most agency owners had to deal with mm -hmm. over the time and then there are a lot of stuff that I had to re-educate myself on mm -hmm. it's an interesting point I think you know you're, you're you're not you're not wrong there's there's certainly you know a lot more designers today than there were 10 years ago um mm -hmm. but I think you know coming from the position of an agency owner myself, there's so much more to branding and messaging and marketing. It goes so far beyond visual assets, right? Design, design is one small, small piece. That's just a, design is the very last piece of the puzzle. The last one, yeah, it's not even the first piece. The, the, yeah, the, the, piece. the very last. And yeah. unfortunately, that's where a lot of people start. Yep, 100%. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, your branding is like a lot of time people, oh, I don't understand marketing. Uh -huh. And then their questions, I would start asking. Uh -huh. And then I flipped that over and said, but you don't have a marketing problem. You perfectly understand what marketing is. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, no. I said, no, your problem is a communication problem, not a marketing problem. Mm -hmm. So we make marketing decisions every day. Mm -hmm. the, 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 so, the, the very clothes that we put on, it's a marketing decision. <laughs> You're doing something to create the atmosphere in which you want people to see you. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's marketing. The, the way you speak, everything you do is marketing. Yeah. People have a communication problem. The, the real issue that you have, you just don't know how to package that and communicate it to the people mm -hmm. that you want to present it to. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I might, yeah, I mean, I, I, can, I can see your point. I might push back a little bit on that. I think like a lot of what you're talking about is, is 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 it is marketing but more than marketing more than marketing it's branding right yeah. it's, it's 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 part of your part of your brand part of who you are establishing you know a brand identity so to speak yeah well branding starts from marketing as i said the, the common person has the entire thing flip the other way mm -hmm. <laughs> remember if you decide that you're going to start a company now you you're venturing in a business the first decision that you make is a marketing decision mm -hmm. most people they, they seek a name for their company they seek a name for their product they see and you're ensuring that that is something that is palatable mm -hmm. so that's where your marketing starts mm -hmm. yeah the, your branding you're going to move from there from your, your marketing there you're going to go to the branding and the way well, yeah, you have your attributes and all those things that will be developed, that's a, a part of that entire process. Mm -hmm. You have to identify and validate all of that before you actually move into the design phase. Well, even even coming up with a name first is almost is almost backwards, yeah, it, right? It, because you need to do you need to do product market research to establish product market fit. Otherwise, you're creating a solution, and you have to find a problem to match your solution. Too much, yeah. <laughs> and you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it that way. You want to create a solution yeah. to match the problem that already exists, and not have to look for a problem to match the solution that yeah. you've created. Yeah, the Pareto principle um, is something that I use across the board in a whole lot of different cases. There, are, there are a lot of use cases that I often present it. Mm -hmm. You know. Your story is 80% of, um, 20% of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. 
you're looking for that 80 percent of what already exists and you find that 20 percent that's what you're going to use to own that mm -hmm. this this problem is in in the world and there's somebody that don't, if they don't have they're working on a solution for that what's your solution mm -hmm. that's the 20 percent that's going to complete that gap mm -hmm. and you're going to present that and use that 20 percent to identify and hone that sector that's mm -hmm. where you sit i like it tell us about some remarkable wins that you've had with your with your coaching um this is your chance to brag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out which is which. Um, their client, uh, one of my clients, I was uh, having a conversation with recently, and he was telling me that he's at the stage now that he feels like he can walk from the industry that he's in. Well, he must operate multiple business, but he said, I, I have learned enough from you over the years mm -hmm. that I feel now I can sit beside you and do everything that you do. <laughs> wow. Nice. Yeah. And this is someone also that has, when I start working with him, his, his his identity, everything within his company was all over the place. Mm -hmm. And we sat down and basically scrapped everything that he had, everything that he was doing, and we start from the ground up. Okay. And he, he right now, yeah, he is one of the proudest entrepreneurs. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's company. But most of the clients that I have, they they have remarkable results. Because I'm well give us give opinion. us give us some examples, Craig. Most in the growth space, like they're, they're clients that have triple, quadruple their income. Okay. And in what in, in th within three months or within a, a bigger time frame? Most of within like a year to two years. A year to two years. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. There is um this company, uh the the dad had passed and leave the company to the kids and uh, they found themselves within a little rut, but the dad had a company for like forty something years and they did not want to walk away from it mm -hmm. and you know we sat went through different processes and that company right now is phenomenal mm -hmm. they after i think like seven months working with them um i found some gaps within related market that they could venture into mm -hmm. and they took the leap and that had gave them great return at maybe like 15 months. It was less than two years. Mm -hmm. They had great success from those two market gaps. Mm -hmm. And now they transition now into two other industries and they're doing phenomenal. Nice. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now let's 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 flip that table upside down. Tell us about some remarkable failures that you've had. Some some uh, give us an example of a time when something has gone spectacularly mm -hmm. wrong and you've learned a lot from it. Yeah, the losses. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, they're not losses if you learn from well, them. Well, we're, 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 we're learn. I I, well, I, well, I tell myself that I never fail you know i i learned something i transitioned to another phase sure. but there is this company that i was doing some some work 
with. And um, that was kind of a dual role, um, consulting, advertising, was operating in both spaces. Mm -hmm. And they had great potential, but somewhere along the, the, the path, um, something went wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the expected result didn't materialize. Mm -hmm. And I had to go back to the, the drawing board. And I told him that, you know, we got to figure out what changed the trajectory path. Mm -hmm. And the great thing, eventually we, we got things back together. <laughs> and I guided them to reposition the company to the point that within two years after that, they get acquired by a major player in the industry nice that's great yeah but that first run was a disaster <laughs> you know a lot, a lot of pieces were missing from the puzzle uh-huh uh -huh. and th things just didn't turn out the way we you know we had expected it but i decided that okay i'm not gonna walk away uh-huh and yeah I, I i worked with them back for close to a year developing yeah. back that new path and they i i had them position the company maybe like 10 times what they were <laughs> <laughs> yeah so even though there were this small company operating in the space yeah what they presented to the world everyone yeah. thought that oh this was a huge company so when the the how the company had approached them to acquire them because okay they were like everywhere we turn these guys are there uh -huh. <laughs> and then this company I, at the time I found out that they had invested I think like uh, something like a hundred and something million dollars in a factory because <laughs> they were expanding uh -huh. so now they see this little company now creeping into our space mm -hmm. so i guess they decided that okay we just did a big investment so we need to find a way to <laughs> fix this problem we gotta so, we gotta squash that bug let's just buy them out <laughs> yeah so they they had acquired that company so i say at the end of the day it was still a great win coming nice. out from the, that disaster so on a on a strategic level or even on a tactical level how did you how did you manage to position this company as being so much bigger than they actually were were you doing like surround sound advertising campaigns and that sort of thing so they were just like showing up everywhere or was it more than more than advertising ah funny enough they they weren't showing up everywhere okay it's just the 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 branding process because i yep. said I, I i scrapped everything that i did i did before and the from the, the design the, the messaging everything was presented in a way that you see it you would think okay this is a company of this magnitude doing this work mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just it's just the way that they showed up okay well so can you can you go into a little more detail about what that actually looks like so the the in the branding space right um mm -hmm. The work that was done, mm -hmm. because I, it got to the point now where I wasn't allocating resource based on their budget, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I said, you know, I, I said, okay, we dropped the button and this, and we're going to fix things. Okay. Sure. So there was no cap. Gotcha. And and the resources that were being allocated to the process. Gotcha. So, cause at the, at that point they had, they had, they wanted to give up on it because they were like, we're out of funds. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, we, we kept out and they were even because there was two guys, they were at the point that they were 
thinking of, you know, just walk away from this. Mm -hmm. And I saw the potential. Mm -hmm. I knew what could have been. <laughs> and that's the reason why I decided, okay, I'm going to stick with you and I'm, I'm going to help you to fix this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it's just the, the work that was done in the process. Mm -hmm. That's what make all the difference. You know, they showed up like the big guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, so what, so I guess my question is, maybe I'm not phrasing my question very well. What does that mean? What does that look like to show up as the big guy? So TV was done. Um, okay. You know, print, radio, everything was done. Gotcha. The, the quality of work uh -huh. that was presented. Uh-huh would be the quality that is coming from a company Most way fair. above yeah. where they were at that at that time gotcha cool nice okay yeah that makes sense nice man that's great um craig what what three books would you recommend all of your clients read um I would say all, because I tend to approach things based on where people are. Mm -hmm. um, but Thinking Fast and Slow, I think that's a great book for um, I would say personal development. Mm -hmm. You know, for strategic thinking, mm -hmm. um, the he mit got a it it gets its fair share of beating from a lot of consultants and coaches <laughs> um, because of his approach to things, and you know they're telling it, oh the 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 system that they're they're advocating for you know is is not the best approach for a lot of entrepreneurs but mm -hmm. um i think it's a working system and overall i think it's a good book for especially new entrepreneurs mm -hmm. entering the world of business i think it's a very good book to read mm -hmm. and it's it speaks email, even email three visited yeah 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 I, I think it's a, a good book for people that is just getting their foot wet Agreed. And um, I get any one of Martin Newmeyer's book, I think, is pretty. <laughs> yeah, <Fair>. and that, <laughs> that's, a great app, that's that's a great one. You know, it helps you to figure out who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, what you are and what you're doing. Yep. What's your purpose? Yeah. 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 Newmeyer's and, great. Uh, yeah, there. So, so there's a couple other books, but um, you know, this is marketing. Um, Set Golden. That's a good book too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there's there's so many. <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, we don't have to list the, them the, all. The recommendation <laughs> list is yeah, it's it, it's a pretty long, long list. Nice. Sweet, man. Well, uh, Craig, this has been great. Is there anything else that you would like to chat about that we have not yet had an opportunity to, to touch upon in this conversation? Um, I would probably be... Impact is, is something that, you know, there's a lot of things that I see in recent times in regards to entrepreneurs making an impact in the in 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 their industries mm -hmm. and um the journey of entrepreneurship there's a whole lot of misconceptions like and that's one of the the, the reason why I, I i decided that okay i need to start doing some things that i can impact <laughs> at least the life of a million entrepreneurs if you know well you know they say technically there's like what three percent of the world are actually entrepreneurs but <laughs> that's enough people that are aspiring you can reach to yep um 
most people think that things has to be clarified for them to move. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of clients that I work with over the years that when you go in and you look at the trajectory path and you realize, oh, things are way off from where they were supposed to be. And oftentimes you go in, you see things, okay, you know, this was supposed to be right, but it is left. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of time you would ask the client what went wrong. Mm -hmm. And they would come on and say, oh, I was a complete idiot. Right. But you move now to a new phase of your journey that you you, you now recognize this went wrong. Mm -hmm. I have an opportunity to fix this. You know, people are looking for that clear path. There is never and there will never ever be a clear, clear path to your journey. And that's one of the reasons why I, you know, a lot of people, you know, beat me up for 18 a business plan mm -hmm. but there is no space within a business plan that had, there is failure you never mm -hmm. every business plan tell you the glorious things that they will happen along your journey and never about the things that are actually waiting for you on your journey mm -hmm. it, it doesn't it doesn't work yeah yeah most the, the uh, an entrepreneur, they will create this great business plan and say, okay, this is the way I'm going to do things. The moment they get into the world, they realize this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, focus on your future state. This is where I am. This is where I want to be. What needs to be done? You, you, you work in marginal success. Because if you're depending on clarity to move, it's never going to happen because you never know. Prepare yourself. Educate yourself. You know, and it's important. I, I always say, like, not because I'm a business coach, but if you're an entrepreneur or you're planning to become an entrepreneur, a business owner, get a coach. Mm-hmm. I have a coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me. You don't need to come and get me. There are a whole plethora of coaches out there. Go find a coach. I thought I was doing great until that person stepped in my life voluntarily. <laughs> mm -hmm. I realized that, oh, so I was doing all of it. Not that it was all wrong, but you're operating blind. Mm -hmm. And it's it often get to a stage that you become so close to your problems, you get blinded by them. Mm -hmm. You no longer see what is happening around you and you don't treat it as a problem anymore. You know, step by step, small pieces eventually you build yourself up you know every attribute that is required to complete your journey identify them validate them that they're actually needed they're required to take you to your future state and just continue the journey you know there's um, a funny story, um, which I think perfectly aligns with this. <laughs> <laughs> so some years ago, I I was traveling and um, where, we, where the destination I was going to was supposed to be a glorious weather. It's one of those places that has one of the best weathers in the world. <laughs> and when we got there, the the, the weather was so bad that I couldn't even look outside the window of the plane. Wow. And I remember when, you know, the pilot, they came in and said, oh, you know, prepare for landing. About 
I remember the plane, the, the moment you feel the plane hit the runway, mm -hmm. we heard the engines just powered back up. And the plane starts climbing back. And then everyone in the plane was starting looking at each other like, what's happening? <laughs> and then we were going up, up for a couple of minutes. And then everyone is now in that <laughs> anxiety uh -huh. phase. Sure. No one know what was happening. We can't see outside. And this lady that was, she was sitting in the house seat beside me and she was to keep repeating over oh, what's going on are we leaving so eventually you know i we got to the, a point where now you're above the clouds so you're looking back down sure <laughs> and i could see a, a, a pretty good view what's happening down there because now you're above above the cloud but when you're down here you're in the rain cloud so you couldn't see anything sure and i remember i turned to her and i said he's no i didn't say you think i said he's going up to get a better view to land safely mm -hmm. and the the guy that was sitting across over the other i'll see this is like um you think <laughs> so then i said well I hope, <laughs> but at that point, um, that wasn't something that that pilot had planned for. It, uh -huh. it wasn't a part of the process. Sure. Now, everything that he needed to do in that moment depended on clarity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he needed to have a clear path to do whatever he was doing. It wasn't there. Mm -hmm. He abart and he going up do what he need to do he came back and he landed that plane mm -hmm. yeah everyone was rejoicing and he, yeah because he completed the process uh -huh. so you don't sit and wait in clarity to move you don't know what's ahead of you just move with resilience mm -hmm. it comes grab the bull by the horn and you just continue the journey love it you know as i said don't expect you're just going to do one thing and all the impact that you need to create is going to happen in the world at once it's it's marginal success yeah that's great that's great advice craig i love that um yeah i think you know uh, clarity is important and there's a time and place for it uh but also as as an entrepreneur as someone in business it's definitely important to take action because if you don't, you're just, you're, you're never going to know. Yeah, it's you're never, never going to know. It's never going to happen. Yeah. It, it, I love I, it, it doesn't matter what you do. It, it's never going to happen. Yeah. Awesome. Craig, where can our listeners and viewers connect with you online on social media? Uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, uh, you know, my name, Craig Martin. And um, Instagram, I am Craig Martin. And for my group coaching platform, uh, that's acclimatedminds.com. Um, in the process right now of um, recruiting. So, yeah, um, you can go there, see if what's been offered is something that can help on your journey. And, you know, as I said, that's just building a network also to give entrepreneurs a a resource to network with you know like-minded people mm -hmm. in the process there's there's a lot of uh there were their workshops their masterminds and stuff that's done um their hot seat process <laughs> You know, that, yeah, sometimes the, yeah, that one entrepreneur is going to, okay, this is my problem that I'm facing now. And then everyone just going to come in and you're in the hot seat. I love it, man. I love it. Acclimatedminds.com. Um, and then we'll put, we'll include that. We'll include that link. Of course, your LinkedIn URL, uh, your Instagram, we'll put all that in the show notes. Um, 
Craig, man, this has been fantastic. Great conversation. I love, uh, I love having you on here. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you and thanks for your time. Man. Thank you, brother. And thank you as always to our viewers and listeners. Uh, without you guys, this podcast means nothing. So thank you so much for, for your attention. That's the best gift that you can give us. Um, be sure to like, subscribe. If you know someone in your circle that you think might find value uh, from, from Craig's wisdom today, uh, please share this podcast with them. And uh, with that said, thank you again, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care.